All right, so starting out with the ideas of brightness, magnitude, and distance, there are three brightness measurements that we'll talk about today. Um, these are luminosity, apparent magnitude, and absolute magnitude. So I'll uh, define these one at a time, uh, but I'll keep coming back to the idea of these three. And by the end of class, you should be able to compare and contrast these and then tell me how they work together to be able to measure distance. Okay, so starting with luminosity, this is the total amount of light energy that's released by a star every second. So um, if I wanted to look at the sun, for example, compared to other stars, a more luminous star, if I'm, you know, standing, uh, let's say that we're near the sun here, right? A more luminous star would be brighter and a less luminous star would be less bright if there's no complicating factor of how far away from the star you are. So this is the total energy released every second. Um, it's measured in the unit of watts. It's the same unit of measurement that we talk about light bulbs, right? And so this is like the intrinsic brightness of the star. This is something that just depends on what's happening in the fiery nuclear furnace and doesn't depend on other extrinsic factors. So that's luminosity. If you took 122, you're familiar with this concept. The second brightness measurement is called apparent magnitude. And this is the amount of visible light that we receive from Earth from a star or a galaxy. So this is something that we measure. Um, and it's measured on a particular scale that was developed by Hipparchus in Greek times. And in this scale, um, a star like Alpha Centauri, which is a fairly bright star in the sky, um, has a magnitude of zero, but otherwise there's nothing special about zero. And brighter stars have negative magnitudes. Um, so for example, Sirius is one of the brightest stars in our sky, has a magnitude of minus 1.46. And then dimmer stars have positive magnitudes. So Betelgeuse is the right, uh, no, I guess left shoulder of the constellation Orion, it's a red star. Um, Mimosa, I don't actually know where that star is, but cool name. And then Bernard's star is a fairly dim star, um, famous for having the biggest proper motion of any star, if you remember from 122. And it's fairly dim with a apparent magnitude of plus 9.5. So as we go more and more negative, those are more and more bright stars. And then more and more positive, that's more and more dim. And there's a couple of uh, kind of cutoffs here on this magnitude scale. One of them is the magnitude of 6.5 and uh, you know, toward the negative end of the scale. Those are visible with the naked eye. And then magnitude 10, which is dimmer than magnitude 6.5, those are only visible with binoculars. And you could draw more cutoffs if you wanted to for stars that are then only visible with telescopes, et cetera. All right, so this, you know, orientation of this magnitude scale can seem confusing, but it's just something you have to remember. Okay, so when we think about how magnitude, which is a measurement of brightness, might correlate with distances to stars, um, I've listed all the stars here in order of their distance from closest to farthest away. And what we notice is that they don't really map on to the brightness scale exactly. It's not necessarily true that all of the brightest stars are nearby and all of the dimmest stars are far away. Instead, they're kind of randomly, you know, arranged. So the reason for this is that the apparent magnitude is just what we measure. It depends both on the intrinsic brightness of the star and how far away it is, right? If I have a very bright star that's very far away, it could look dimmer than a dim star that's nearby. So we'll practice with this idea in the activity today. And here's one example. So we have Sirius is much brighter than Bernard's star, even though it is farther away than Bernard's star. So which one do you suppose has the higher luminosity? Yeah, so if it's brighter despite being farther away, then it must be actually putting out a lot more energy than Bernard's star. Definitely. Um, you can kind of think of this as 
um, you know, everyone's been on, well, probably a highway at night, right? And distant cars have very dim headlights. Then they get brighter and brighter as they get closer to you until they blind you. Um, and so it's just that, that same idea. And we know that most cars have the same, you know, intrinsic brightness of their headlights. So then based on the brightness, we can estimate how far away the car is. Uh, the only hiccup here is that, you know, unlike car headlights, stars come in a wide variety of different wattages, different luminosities. Okay, so Sirius is indeed the more luminous star. So we can quantify how much the brightness decreases with distance. So remember the luminosity is staying the same. That's just an intrinsic property of the star. But as you get farther from the star, the brightness decreases and it decreases proportional to the distance squared. So the reason for this is you can kind of think of if you have like a can of spray paint, um, there's a certain area that you can cover with a given amount of paint right, that's coming from the can based on the, I don't know, the density of paint coming out of the can, right? And as you go farther and farther away from your paper, you're covering more and more area, but each square of your paper gets less and less paint per unit area. And the same exact thing is here happening for brightness. You can think of the light as your spray paint and um, an imaginary sphere around your star as the paper that you're painting. So um, if I go twice as far away, for example, then my brightness would decrease by a factor of one over two squared, one fourth. So the brightness decreases fairly quickly as you get far and far away from a star. So to check this idea out, I have this poll for you. Suppose that you have two stars and they both have the same luminosity. Um, suppose star A is 100 light years from Earth and star B is 300 light years from Earth, then how many times brighter would star A have to be? Um, okay, so if star A is, uh, is the same luminosity as star B, then, but it's uh, closer to Earth, then it's going to appear brighter, right? And it has to appear more than three times brighter because as we saw in the uh, previous slide, do, 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 here, as we go farther in distance, the brightness that we see, the apparent brightness, is proportional to one over the distance squared. So if I go three times farther away, star B is out here, star A is down here, uh, like at position one, position three, right? If I go three times farther away for star B, then its apparent brightness would go down by a factor of one ninth. So star A would actually have to be more than three times as bright as star B. It would actually have to be nine times as bright as star B. So the correct answer here would be E, that it has to be more than four times as bright. Okay, the logic here can be hard to wrap your mind around. For me, you know, it's hard for me to keep straight even when I've practiced it many times. Um, so it's, it, it takes practice to um, get this idea. Uh, the book has a bunch of review questions that might be helpful for this and you should get some practice in the homework as well. All right, so our third and final brightness measurement here is the absolute magnitude. This one is a little bit different than the others because it's by definition. So by definition, it's the amount of light that you would see if a star or galaxy was at 10 parsecs from Earth. Um, so at a distance of 10 parsecs, then it would be defined to have this given absolute magnitude. But obviously not all stars or galaxies are at 10 parsecs from Earth, right? Some are farther and some are closer. So um, the idea with absolute magnitude is that it's similar to apparent magnitude in that it's still measured on the same scale, where more negative values mean brighter objects and more positive values mean dimmer objects. But it's different than absolute magnitude because it's by definition as if the star were 10 parsecs away. So if a star has an absolute magnitude that's equal to its apparent magnitude, then that star is 10 parsecs away. Um, but if the star is farther than 10 parsecs or closer, it's going to have an absolute magnitude different from the apparent. In the lab, I'll give you an equation you can use to calculate distance using absolute and apparent magnitudes. So this is why we have this quantity. Um, and it's just related to the um, luminosity of the star. So um, it's a measure of the intrinsic brightness. 
So the way I like to think of this is, you know, absolute is a real property of the star, right? It's an intrinsic property like the luminosity. Whereas the apparent magnitude is what we measure and that depends on our distance from the star. And so the, the key here is that knowing both magnitudes, you can figure out the distance. Um, and it's only when both the absolute and the apparent magnitude are the same that a star would be at 10 parsecs away. That's only because it's by definition in the absolute magnitude, right? All right. In your homework, you'll get some practice applying this idea and reasoning as to whether a star with absolute magnitude greater than or less than its um, apparent magnitude would be closer or further than 10 parsecs. Okay, and this, all, this whole discussion might seem like it's really star-centered because that's where all these brightness measurements were developed. Um, but for a galaxy, the way that we treat the magnitude is that it's the total of all the visible light that we see from the galaxy, even though that's kind of spread out in space, we treat all of that as if it's added together and as if it came from a single point like a star. So that's the reason we can, you know, measure the absolute magnitude from a galaxy, even though it's actually an extended object. Okay, so just to review our brightness measurements, um, which brightness measurements change with distance? And I see most votes for B, which is correct. So the apparent magnitude is the only one that changes with distance. Apparent is what we apparently see. It's what we measure here on Earth. Luminosity is an intrinsic property of the star. And then absolute magnitude doesn't exactly change with distance, but it's defined with respect to a 10 parsec distance. 